binge the full week ad free over at patreon.com slash inspired disorder. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. Jaws 3D. Uh, this is uh, the third, obviously, film in the Jaws franchise. I uh, read a little bit of behind-the-scenes uh, trivia on the the film, and it was initially intended to be a parody film. It was not in- intended to be an actual sequel, but nobody wanted to be part of it. Uh, and somewhere in that, they decided to make it a sequel. Um has nothing to do really with the original two Jaws films. Aside from the two main male characters are the grown-up versions of Brody's kids. Uh, I think it's like Mike and uh, Chris or something like that. Mike Brody and Sean Brody, the older and younger brother. Uh, Mike Brody played by Dennis Quaid in one of his early roles. He works... For a company that some people may know, a company that should not exist anymore, that company being SeaWorld, uh, this movie is very much, uh, feels in a lot of ways like a SeaWorld commercial, like they put a lot of money into it, despite the fact that uh, it's it's also a lot like Jurassic Park. So if like Jurassic Park was SeaWorld, uh, that's kind of this movie. Because it's like, you know, this new thing's opening up. It's this crazy new uh, underwater world. And for whatever reason, they, they make the uh, the main base for the theme park under the water as well. Which, you know, as soon as they mention that, that it's like, oh, well, I have a feeling something's going to go wrong with uh, a thing underwater. And it's a Jaws film. Uh, but yeah, and it's it was done for 3D. This was also the highest grossing 3d film up until spy kids uh 3d which is you know so i don't know what like 20 almost 30 years that it was uh the number one grossing 3d film and it's got the 3d residue all over it uh it's got a ton of scenes where it's just this thing floating inside the camera i guess there was a lot of arguments where the initial 3d was just to add depth uh but the studio wanted more of the stuff coming at you um, so all of that stuff is stuff is super noticeable all the times where it's got things flying at you. Uh, but just in general, like you have that old style 3D where it's like the color separation. It's through. It's not something that like they made a separate 2D version of this film and just didn't have that stuff. It just looks like like the thing you're supposed to be focusing on. There's no color separation. Everything. It just doesn't. It has 3D residue all over the place um i think it's supposed to be at like florida or whatever they made the shark bigger uh it and it it's not for whatever it's not the same jaws obviously because the first jaws the original jaws got his head blown off in the first one and then somehow regenerated his head and just had a scar on his face and then was electrocuted to death in the second one uh so this is just some other shark i mean it's really just some other shark that's supposed to also be uh apparently a lot larger than the original shark but still not that that big uh this movie does all of the the things that a lot of current uh movies do with special effects is that most of the scenes take place at night you know so you don't really have to to show good quality whatever um, it's interesting that that's a trend. <laughs> that's one of the trends that that caught on from Jaws 3D or from the Jaws franchise is that when they went to Jaws 3D and they started using the the nighttime, the dark scenes to cover up bad special effects. It's sad that gigant you Wonder Woman 2 just came out recently and that movie gigantic budget, gigantic blockbuster budget still uses nighttime to cover up bad special effects. Uh, it's amazing that that films still do that. Most DC films do that. Um, but yeah, it's basically like uh, SeaWorld is Jurassic Park, where it's like, you know, they, they open up and, uh, you know, it's connected to the ocean and the gates that connect it to the ocean, a big shark gets in, which I think is also similar in some ways to Deep Blue Sea, if I'm not 
not mistaken. There's kind of a similar, I mean, it's a killer shark, but it's like the, the shark gets into, I haven't watched Deep Blue Sea in a while, but I think that's more of a scientific research space. I don't think it's like a, a theme park. Uh, but yeah, the shark gets in and causes chaos. Uh, you know, just not good. The acting's not good. There's a scene that that really kind of illustrates how horrible this, this has got to be. The worst, in actually, in my opinion, Jaws 3D is by far the worst Jaws of the franchise. Uh, but there's this scene early on when the the younger brother comes to visit the older brother who's working at SeaWorld, and they go to a bar. Uh, you know, they introduce like, oh, this is my girlfriend. They have like another girl for for him. But the girls don't mean anything, obviously. They're just kind of they're they're just there because, you know, you have to have a female thing or whatever, but it's only the men they care about. But there's a scene where it's like the brother there's this game called standoff, right? That they play in this bar. And all you seem to be doing is standing in front of another person and you put your hands on each other and you try to push each other over. That's the game, and if you fall over, then you lose. That's like they invented this game that is the dumbest thing ever, and they put it in the movie as like a way for the brother to kind of. That's how he breaks the ice with this other chick. It, it's so dumb. It's like one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. It, it, it's like it, I don't know. It, it's so much of this movie, it's just so bad, and it's sad that Dennis Quaid was part of it, but it is what it. It's it's crazy. It's the 3D film of Jaws, right? They it wasn't even supposed to be a sequel, but that you know they probably they're like, oh, we got the 3D technology. It's clearly a studio like push to get money. Like we'll brand, we want to do a shark 3D movie. We'll brand it as this. We can't do a parody. We're gonna we're gonna make it real. Um, they kept like the through line of the sons, which plays out in the the fourth one, Jaws Revenge. Uh, is uh is is still the the sons but this one you know has nothing to do it's not there i don't even think they reference where they're from it's it's a very loosely tied to it um but uh yeah it, i mean because it's the movie is a lot like a jurassic park type of thing you know it's it's the story of the things going wrong where you know the the shark ends up uh they try to kill the shark the shark causes damage to the the, they have like these, you know, underwater viewing tunnels, walkways that that take you to the hub. And the hub, that's where the main control center is, underwater, of course. Uh, but, you know, these long viewing pathways where you can see all the, the under the, the water life uh, just kind of swimming around you, which there's plenty of those in reality. Uh, you know, hotels have them and there's a lot of, you know, I'm sure SeaWorld even has them. Um, but Jaws damages those. And then you see, like, there's these scenes of all these people. Like, all of a sudden, SeaWorld has, like, uh, a warehouse full of, like, 40 welders. And they're all trying to re-weld new structural things to replace. So it's like, while the park is open, Jaws damages some of the infrastructure, causing it to flood. So you got people stuck in areas that you're going to have to get. Like, just all kinds of things start going wrong around the park. And it's just like, it just... It's just so bad. It's so dumb. Like, why wouldn't they just just get everybody out? Why are you trying to fix this thing while the park's still open? Doesn't make any sense. But I guess you know, similar to the first one, it's like, oh, we don't want to close the beaches. But this is just even dumber. This is this is like dumber than not wanting to close the beach. Um, it ends like there's a scene where Jaws eats one of like there's during the course of the film. There's just like this uh, nature guy who documents nature but he also like is really good at hunting and he wants to hunt this shark and uh you know he's got like grenades and he's got like big giant like security guys that help him out and it's like but he's got like this really if he's he's not like an imposing figure whatsoever and he's got like this weird like british accent it's just weird i don't even know if it's british but it's a weird accent it's like oh i'm gonna kill it i'm gonna kill it and uh he, I believe it's him that ends up getting eaten. And it's like, there's scene, which probably the coolest, the only cool thing to come out of this film is there's, there's a shot from inside the mouth of Jaws looking out. That kind of looked cool. 
but there's a scene from the guy getting eaten and his arms still kind of you know out inside the the shark's mouth like just just past his reach is the the jaws of the shark and he's got the grenade in his hand and the end scene how they they defeat jaws is like i think dennis quaid gets like this little stick with a hook on it and he, he's able to pull the pin and then the you know the the grenade goes off inside jaws and his head blows up very much like the very first film Right, which if we know anything about the Jaws family lineage, is they're able to regenerate their heads and come back again. Uh, but I, that's not how Jaws comes back in the the, the fourth one. I think Jaws, like the the first Jaws, only shows up in the first two films, and then in this one, and then the last one, it's just sharks. That that kind of by the last one, which I'll talk about more, it seems like the family's cursed with sharks. Um, but yeah, so the the they defeat Jaws by blowing up his head again, and of course there's their gratuitous, extremely horrible, extremely cheesy like 3D explosion of Jaws uh, that happens at the very end, and it's just uh, it's just bad. It's just so bad. It's just so bad. Uh, I would have loved to see a parody. Apparently, the parody starts off with the writer of the original film uh, or the book. I forget. Um, being eaten by Jaws in his pool. Like, that's how the movie supposedly starts, and, like, there's supposed to be, like, aliens and stuff in it. That would have been really fun to see, uh, like, a Jaws parody film um, versus what they actually made. But uh, it's crazy. Uh, it's insane that SeaWorld is such a big part of it. It seems like they're promoting SeaWorld, even though it shows how horrible. It actually d doesn't even show how horrible SeaWorld actually is. Uh, which, you know, is, is kind of disturbing. Um, but yeah, it's a really weird film, Jaws 3D. I wouldn't recommend it unless you're in the mood to see, if like you're just curious to see where the franchise goes. Uh, but yeah, Jaws 3D, by far the worst of the franchise, came out in 83, looks horrible, acting's horrible, writing's horrible, Jaws is horrible, the 3D residue of the film is horrible. Uh, the premise is interesting. I mean, it's basically Jurassic Park, but it's still like, it's stupid. It's so stupid. Uh, so don't check it out. Don't don't give this movie any any attention whatsoever. Get yourself two free audiobooks through Audible when you go through my link, inspireddisorder.com/audible. That's two free audiobooks just by going through my link inspireddisorder.com slash audible if you stay with the service you get a free book every month audible originals also available guided wellness programs news and so much more but get yourself two free books because you're a listener of the ray taylor show by going through inspireddisorder.com slash audible and get yourself two free books new episodes of the ray taylor show come out every single day subscribe on igtv youtube and everywhere else podcasts are found Binge the full week ad-free over at patreon.com slash inspired disorder. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at inspireddisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out!